my field is in recreation and leisure studies and looking at play and wonder and curiosity. And when I saw the film, I was delighted because you, um, you exemplify so many of those qualities. And I wonder, just to start off, if you could talk a little bit about the role of wonder in your work. I don't take my life as play at all. I take it very seriously. That what I'm doing is to revolutionize the future of mankind, of humankind. And so the sense of the, 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 the word play doesn't come into it at all. Uh, this is not fun and games. I don't play at all. And so the role of, you mentioned the role, what is the role wonder. of? Wonder. Wonder. <laughs> Wonder has a, I don't separate wonder from achievement at all. Achievement, accomplishment, and wonder are one thing. Uh, if, I, if I'm interested, let's say I, one day I thought I would take up boxing after gymnastics because I was too injured from 20 years of gymnastics. I wondered about boxing and I got into it. And uh, I got into it very seriously. And, and the, the wonder brought me there, but it was not the wonder that made me achieve what I did. Mm -hmm. So wonder is, a, is a, an impetus for, for a, a, a subject, but it's not, the, it's, it's not the, the, the spirit that brings you through the accomplishment of that subject. So, um, so wonder in the sense of playfulness, of... of, of um, of uh, frivolity, no. There is none of that. In my life, there's no frivolousness. There's no, shall we say, play, in the sense of playing because you're just re recreating something. I don't recreate anything. When I take on something, I take it on very seriously, and I want to be the best in the world at it. Hmm. And so that is, you know, I take my life very seriously, and I hope everyone here does, because life is a gift. And if you don't make the most of your life, if you don't achieve the impossible and break the, the chains of your own frame, frame of mind, your own, the limitations of your framework in your mind, then you can very easily waste your life. And I refuse to waste my life. And so play in the sense of recreation, frivolity, um, just having a good time, no. That's not a part of my life. I do not have just a good time, you know, so, so I take things very seriously. How do you derive your designs? We were talking about, in the movie, you talked about the tardigrade, mm -hmm. and perhaps you could share a little bit about, about that. First, I asked myself, what would nature do if nature were given this problem? You know, whatever it might be, whether it's a, a, a small house or a, a, the tallest tower in the world or a bridge across the Strait of Gibraltar or whatever it might be, a floating city, which I've done all these things up. I ask, the first question I ask is, what would nature do? How would nature solve this problem if it were given these challenges? And so that's, that's my first introduction into a journey that, that is fascinating and remarkable. And so that spirit of inquiry uh, comes from the study of nature. Uh, for instance, my parents' house here in Berkeley, uh, that came from, my parents wanted something indestructible, safe, uh, a, a cocoon from the world, something private, uh, away from the, ru the, the, the rustle of, of the everyday world. And so I looked at what is the most indestructible creature in the world, which happened to be the tardigrade. And, uh, and then started to ask, well, what, what is it about the tardigrade that makes it that I could apply to architecture? And so it came from that kind of inquiry. And so nature is very, part of, very much a part of my, my mentality because I'm always asking, what would nature do if it were given this problem? And also, what are the principles of nature that I can apply every day? One of the most important things that I, that, would, that I think would make us all a lot healthier and, and uh, guard against sickness is the strength to weight ratio. That is, everything in nature is the strongest it can be and the lightest it can be. 
So if you put, if you take that very seriously in your everyday life, as I do, that I'm going to be as strong as I can be and as light as I can be. And when I, once you're in that state, it guards against sickness, obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, whatever you might, you know, and, and a, a surfeit of other, other maladies. So, so these principles of nature, when applied to everyday life, that's what I'm interested in. How do you apply it? Don't just talk the talk, you've got to walk the walk. And you have to be fierce about it. This is not, this is not fun and games. This is very serious. So, building on that, how do you apply it in your life? You were telling me some interesting things a yeah. little bit earlier. When I write, I write from the left to right, right to left, left to right, right to left, left to right. I write in a continuous back and forth fashion. So what does that do? Well, okay, that's interesting. What I found out that it does, oh, well, first of all, I did it because I noticed that when your eyes move from left to right, they jerk back. Think about it. You go from left to right, your eyes jerk back. Left to right, your eyes jerk back. Well, if you, if you are at all an athlete, you will know that any jerky motion is very, is very uh, it robs you of energy. So I thought, why not soothe your eyes and, and do what naturally seems to make sense by left, writing left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left. I found out later that that's how speed reading works. And that's also um, a Houston-based surgeon, eye surgeon, told me that that will also make your eyes, the muscles of your eyes, much less fatigued. And then another uh, psychologist said that that also uh, equalizes the left and right side of your brain. Because as you write from the right to left, you have to use the right side of your brain because you have to be spatially aware of the, the, the space of each word that you're writing. So, okay. But remember, too, that in college, when this first started, um, think about people making fun of you. Well, that's crazy. You write from left to right. Are you crazy? Yeah. Yeah. So what? I'm crazy. Well, I'm going to do it. You see, part of the message that I have to, today is that you have to stick to your own commitment in, in finding solutions to everyday challenges. And one is just the simple fact of, of reading and writing. You know, just observe things and you will revolutionize the way we think and act. And that's part of it, is, is that I, ju I just question things. You were um, telling me a little bit earlier about that you eat a little bit differently yeah. now. Eight years ago, I thought that was a crazy idea, and I put it aside thinking that's ridiculous. And then a year later, I started researching it. And I found that there's no downside to eating everything. It actually makes a lot of sense. So I started it. It took me three months to adjust to it. And uh, it's a very, very natural rhythm because your body rests every other day. And so you're, you digest your food very well. And, and you think, well, how am I going to have energy? Now remember, eight year, nine years of comp world-class competitive boxing. Uh, I was eating every other day the whole time, or most of the time. And uh, I found out that your energy does not come from eating a lot of food. It comes from another source. It, it comes from your determination, your, 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 uh, your motivation to accomplish something. So but there are so many myths in this world. And you know, when I started eating every other day, I started listening to people's conversation. Every other conversation was about where to eat, what kind of food. Oh, this place is so much better than that place. Uh, it's cheaper than this, the quality of food is better. You know, how much time we waste talking about food and the act of cooking food, the act of preparing food, the act of going to eat food, the act of, of buying food. And so, you know, all of these things, uh, one has to question and, and find ways to, to be better, to, to question the, the whole nature of everyday things. And, and find out real solutions to them. So eating every other day is, uh, I think, a, a wonderful thing. You, you also you defecate half the time, you know, much less. Uh, 
you're, uh, you're, 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 you're exploiting, exploiting the planet half of what you do normally. Uh, you're, you save, I save 1,100 hours a year by eating every other day. I calculate that. 1,100. Now, what could you do with 1,100 hours? That's a lot of hours to be productive. Yeah. And so I compose music, I, I design buildings, I write books, I observe things, you know, I you do, do a lot of different things. Because I have an extra 1,100 hours, and the moral, the moral issue of me using, robbing the planet 50% less propels me forward morally. And you say, well, how can you, but I don't see anybody taking this on, taking this seriously. Maybe you ought to try it. And, and, and the idea of, oh, I can't do that. You better watch out for, I can't do this, I can't do that, because that's going to frame your whole life, and forever you're going to be much lesser than you could have. Yeah. You, will, you, will, you will live with much less, uh, in a, a much less potential way than you could have. Because, yeah, you. I, you, because we all live, we tend to live with an I can't attitude. And to me, that is the, that is the enemy. You've talked about self-imposed limitation. Yep. And I actually have two questions about this. One has to do with, I want to hear a little bit more about that and your perspective on that. The other is, how does the issue of constraint in some way or limitation affect creativity? Yeah, self-imposed limitation. That's, what, that's our biggest challenge. That is the enemy. Self-imposed limitations because you know, we, 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 we don't question our assumptions and expectations. We don't question enough. We don't push through the challenges that we're faced with every day. So we limit ourselves with a framework and we become lesser and lesser of a human being. Our potential is robbed and we are demeaned by our own attitudes. And so, our, our, and so we, we, we live far less than we're capable of living. And you mentioned the second and constraint one. Constraint and creativity. The, well, constraint and creativity. Creativity is a creativity is a motivational force. You have to want it. It doesn't just come on. You know, just I'll just sit here and, and a song will come to mind, or or a, a sketch might come up, and uh, or uh, I'll think of something. No, it doesn't happen that way. At least not for me. You have to sit down and you have to push yourself to to be creative. You have to want to be creative. It's a desire. It is not just a serendipitous, you know, uh, uh, emotional feeling. Oh, I'm created today. No, that that is that is the biggest myth in the world. It's a lot of work to be creative, and you have to dedicate your life to it. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, you know, you you must be the motivator, and you must, and, and through your motivation, you can share that with other people, because we. Well, I think all none of us will will uh, will uh, will disagree that this world needs to be a lot more motivated, because I see indolence, laziness as one of our biggest enemies, because we 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 reduce ourselves to laziness, recreation. Oh, let's just go through the day and be comfortable and and con it's convenient, and let's you know let's take the car and mail the letter a block away. And ride back. You know, we 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 become uh, we become victims of comfort and ease and convenience and quickness, and that is destroying this planet. By the way, that those four items are what is what is at the root of destroying our future and our health and our and our self, our mentality. So, it takes motivation. It takes you taking a stand, a commitment for for living a way that is true to yourself and disregarding what anybody ever says how many my own my mother is here today uh, i always you know I, i'm not afraid to say that uh, you know my upbringing was very difficult you know they wanted to, they wanted a doctor or a lawyer they wanted someone who to, who would would fit in what would, would uh, be a nice complacent um, uh, accomplished person in the in the conventional way and what they get got was me <laughs> and uh, and I'm in the, and I there are many fights, physical fights even, and my mother will will acknowledge that my mother and father. It was not this. I was not brought up in a nurtured 
uh, environment where, oh, Eugene, be, yeah, be the best you can be, yeah, be unique. Oh, no. No, it's what, what kind of a person did we create? You know, what, what, I gave birth to this kind of person? You know, they, they, they were shamed. My, my, my parents were shamed for many decades of my life. And, uh, and, and I'll, you know, I know she's probably embarrassed to hear this, but, uh, but I'm not afraid to say it because it's the truth. And the truth is often very hard and painful to hear. And so, uh, you know, today I, I, I want to put away the, 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 the pleasantries and the, the politeness of truth because it can be very hurtful and very, um, and very difficult to accept. And, uh, and, but that's part of my life. You have to have the guts to, to, uh, to face the truth. And, uh, and that is what I love to do every day. Would you describe yourself then as a nonconformist? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm a nonconformist. Uh, but, it, but only because, not because I want to be a nonconformist, but because I want to question the, the meaning and substance of what is, you know, what we have created in society and our culture and other cultures. You know, I've done, I, I spend half my time, or not half, but I spend a good deal of time in China. And, and uh, I'm disgusted by the Chinese society, by the culture, what it's become. And, uh, you know, I don't particularly uh, uh, support it. Uh, so, uh, you know, so, this, so there's, there are challenges everywhere. Um, so uh, s that's just the way I am. Uh, and by, by Chinese means, I'm very successful. But uh, when it right, comes right down to, you know, is Dr. Tsui, does he fit in? Is he one of us? Oh, no. No, he's not one. He's from the planet Mars <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, and they've even said, you, you are not Chinese. You're, you're an alien from another planet. Yeah, so, uh, but they say it in a nice way. <laughs> so, uh, but that's the way it is. Fine, if that's the way you think, then, you know, so be it. But uh, I, I'm not. That's not going to interfere with what I want to set out to do. I'm wondering about if you see a difference between excellence and perfection. Perfection. What is perfection? You know, I, I find that, that's a, that the concept of perfection needs to be questioned. It's, perfection is, is what? What are you perfecting? Um, to me, uh, perfection, maybe the closest thing is skill and action. And I think, I think that the, the, the root meaning of the word, word perfection comes from skill and action. And to me, it's irrelevant. Perfection is what is what is important is a chi is excellence that you must reach for excellence in everything you do. I mean everything you do. You know, not just your uh, not just your your profession, your teaching, your writing. No, but you know, every everything you do in life, try to be the best at it. You know, try to be excellent with it, and uh, and that keeps you going forward. And I wonder if you would share about your lineage and how you perceive your lineage. Well, I would say that I inherited very much from my mother. I inherited a lot from my mother. My mother was a, a triple team captain in, in sports when she was younger uh, in China in the 40s. You know, the 40s. That's when girls weren't even supposed to play sports. And she was the captain of the basketball, the volleyball, and the soccer team. Uh, so I inherited that kind of drive. She's also a Chinese opera singer, Beijing opera singer, dancer, and a physical therapist. All those things I inherited from my mother, and uh, I certainly didn't inherit the things she wanted to, you know, the, the, the things she wanted me to be, you know, a nice, complacent part of society. No, I'm not that. So, uh, so I, I say it from my mother and father, and my father was an engineer, so I inherited the 3D thinking, the, the ability to draw, mechanical drawing and drafting well. So I'd say that I inherited much from my parents. Um, but being Chinese, I, I am not proud of being Chinese, actually, uh, because of the, the society, the culture. It's very image-driven. It's very superstitious-driven. And I am against those things. Um, I think I have much, much of a closer kinship with the Mongolian culture. 
And my, I've been to Mongolia twice. I just came back about uh, six weeks ago. I'm wearing Mongolian boots. And for instance, the, why are these boots shaped they are, the way they are? Because when you, when you walk, you don't, you don't destroy the environment around you. You don't destroy the grass because, you're, because the tips are, are curved up. So they have a, and Genghis Khan also was the first person in, in history to have laws against environmental destruction. And also the, the forms and colors and shapes and the boldness of Mongolian culture really appeals to me. Mm -hmm. So I think that I'm actually much more Mongolian than I, and, and when I walked into Mongolia, I said, oh no, you're not Chinese. You're, in fact, you look like Chinggis Khan's best friend. <laughs> and so, and, and uh, I'll say right now that the reason why I, I have two S's in my name is because I, I was, now this may sound very far-fetched, but I, I one day uh, on winter solstice in China, 2010, I was woken by a voice. Uh, it said that, that I'm Temujin, which is the birth name of Genghis Khan. And said, Eugene, uh, I, I won't go into this very deeply, but just one of the things he said of the three was that you have to add an S to your name because the double S has magic power to it and you need, to, you meet, you need that power to achieve what you set out to do. And so I looked at it and I said, well, that's interesting. Who's got double S? Picasso, Matisse, Sid Charisse, you know, a lot of other people. I thought, hmm, that's interesting. So I thought about it for a while and I said, yeah, I like the way that looks. And so that's why I began to put a double S in my name. Yeah. And I'm going to legally change it, too, much to the chagrin of my mother and father. But so what? I don't, I don't really care about that. So, uh, so, it's, uh, so that's how the double S came. I want to say something that one of the most important points, I think, of my being here today for you, because you you know, you, you feel yourself as a senior citizens getting on in, 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 in age. Well, it's all your attitude and, and, and your research. You know, people worry about their, as they get older, they worry about their energy levels, their balance, their, their bone structure, their muscle deterioration. Uh, naturally, you get a little weaker. Well, do something about it. You know, don't be complacent. Don't be indolent. You know, do get, get, find, research it. Find out how do I get stronger. You know, I was a world champion when I was 59 years old. 50, no, no, no. 50. Last was 57. Sorry, 57 years old. And I was training with 19 and, and 22 and 23 year olds. And pretty soon they began to see that you know age is just a number. You, if you are determined to, to do what you have set out to do, it doesn't matter what age you are. Mm -hmm. And how, how quickly we become entrapped in the, the thinking that, oh, I'm old now, or I can't do this, I can't do that. Don't ever, uh, uh, don't ever get caught in the, the attitude of, I can't. That is, that is your enemy. The, 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 the attitude of, I can't do this. You know, I have had 500 interns from around the planet. And over the years, I've seen young people, very young people, 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, or younger high school people, who I've actually taken on some high school people, they already are starting to think, I can't do this, I can't do that. Oh, you can't do that. No. Well, what, what would my friends say? Well, who cares what your friends say? And, and what do you mean you can't do this? You have the, your whole life in front of you. Uh, you know, and, and you've got to, to reach for, for your dreams. And don't let anybody get in the way of that. So, you know, so don't just go through life being, oh yeah, it's, uh, you know, wake up in the morning, okay, what do I have to do now? What have I been told what to do? No, don't, don't ever do, live your life by someone else's standards. You have to live your life according to your own standard. And you make that standard very high. And, and, uh, and you have the attitude that, you know, I'm going to go out and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do whatever I want to do and, and change the future of this planet. You know, uh, a, a case in point, my daughter-in-law, uh, when my, my son, her husband, goes away on a, a business trip, uh, she comes and stays with me, with the kids and, and her, my grandchildren, because she's afraid to be by herself. She's thinking some, you know, some burglar or rapist is going to come in the house. Okay, I so said, you know what? I hope a burglar and rapist does come in the house because I will give me an excuse to put that person's head through the wall. You know, it, it, why don't you grab, you know, grab for, for, for an opportunity, use it as an opportunity, not, uh, not as a, don't be a victim. 
You know, don't be bullied by your own attitudes. You know, reach up, stand up, take a stand, commit yourself to something. Commit yourself to something greater than yourself. That's where happiness lies. When you've committed your life to something far greater than your own self. And that means changing the world, changing humanity. And so, you know, you should be, you should think of, think of danger as an opportunity. Don't be a victim. You know, you, uh, uh, um, you impose yourself on the world, because that's the only way it's going to change. Uh, uh, cha uh, and, you know, you, you don't change by playing the game. You change by making your own rules and imposing them on the world. And, uh, and that, that is the way you're going to change the planet. You don't do it by being, oh, nice, oh, yes, polite, oh, whatever you say, sir, yes, we'll just do it, yes, well, I'll just uh, be another businessman or another nice doctor, lawyer, whatever it is, you know, whatever you want, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll give it to you. No, don't do that. You are your own person, and you need to take a stand, commit yourself to something. That is ageless. You know, when you, when you, it doesn't matter how old you are, and you better take care of yourself, because if you really love life, you're going to find ways to live longer and stronger and be as light as and strong as you can. You know, there's a, there's a billboard on the, on the, over the freeways not too long ago that said, there's someone today that's going to live to 150 years old. Well, you be that person, because I am. And, and then my wife says, oh, but you're going to watch your, your children die and your grandchildren die? And said, so, yeah, I am. <laughs> so, so what? You know, because I'm going to live and if, if they don't take care of themselves, they're not. Well, that's too bad, because I am going to, to do what I set out to do, and I hope they have a dream too. And I hope they, 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 listen, they see my example and have the guts to be themselves. So, you know, so that's what I want to share with you, that message. Because you, you, don't go, you don't achieve anything, you don't have meaning in your life by just complacently going through life and doing what you're told. No, that is not what you must do. You must take a stand for doing something different, for being yourself, for bring some uniqueness to this world. God, we need so much of it. You know, how many, how many times do we see the next generation of people, you know, what are they doing? They're shooting each other. They're looking at their iPhones. I refuse to have an iPhone. You know, I, you, know you take a stand for, for what is meaningful to you. I'd rather memorize my telephone numbers than have, have it put on a, fo a phone. Because, you know, when you, when you don't use it, you lose it. You use your brain, you lose your brain cells. Frankly, from boxing, I've lost some, I think I've lost, I've injured, uh, I, have, I have some short-term memory loss, which I'm, which I'm now replenishing. You know, I, 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 I said, okay, I'm quitting this because I do notice some you know, short-term memory loss. Fine. Okay, so I'm going to, to rejuvenate my brain and be back to normal. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So, you know, and the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to go into wrestling, you know, for gymnastics, uh, boxing, wrestling. And my, but my wife said, if you go on into wrestling, the divorce papers will be on your doorstep in a week. <laughs> and because I, I missed having dinner with my daughter and, and wife for nine years. Because dinner time was the time where you went to the gym. Because right after work, you go right to the gym and you are in that ring. And you are, you know, getting pounded and you are dishing it out. And you know it's it's scary. It's not it, it's not. So when you say have fun, it's not fun. I don't do this for fun. I do this because it's something I want to achieve and because a guy enjoy, it's enjoyable. But you know it's not recreation. I don't do things for recreation purposes. Yeah. I do things because I'm serious about it and because I want to learn about it and I want to be the best I can be at doing it. A lot of what we talk about in the field of leisure has to do with intrinsic motivation. And I do see you as somebody who is very motivated in, intrinsically. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in a, in a sense, you, when I say you exemplify something, it's having to do with creativity mm -hmm. and a, a certain approach to life, which does involve a lot of curiosity. Yeah. Um, and a lot of wonder. Yeah. Um, there's a great question here from the audience, which okay. is, what gives you joy? Huh. The challenge of, the, what gives me joy is the challenge of doing the impossible, making the impossible possible. 
That gives me the greatest joy. Uh, I remember my parents, when, when I graduated from high school, I didn't want to go to university. I didn't go to university. I just went out and with my drawings, I found work uh, in an architecture firm. And they said, that's impossible. You have no degree, no experience. You're, you're 19 years old. How are you going to go out and find work in an architecture firm? That's a, that's a high level profession. Well, the second architect I, I, I encountered hired me right then and there. I would show up the next day. And, it, it, and that gave me a great deal of joy, making the impossible possible. And, and I think back, you know, in 2003, four, if you would have told me that you're going to be the eight time champion of the world, I would have said, you're, Are you crazy? That is ridiculous. But you, you don't know. You never know what's going to happen next. And so, uh, you know, so I, I, uh, I ju you just have to move forward. And, uh, and I am, what brings me the greatest joy is making the impossible possible. And I have a lot of things I want to do now, too. I'm writing a song. You know, I want to make that song a great hit around the world. It's, it's called uh, Because I Can. And, uh, and I'm writing that song right now. And, uh, and I'm writing books. And, you know, there's a lot. And I'm inventing uh, 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 the Chinese game for learning Chinese, because I think that's very much needed in this world. So I'm doing a lot of different things. And, uh, and you say, well, geez, that's impossible. You can't do that. You can't do that and that and that. Why not? Uh, so, you know, if, I, if I'm alive, I'm going to do it. So, yeah, what gives me joy is, is, is doing the, making the impossible possible. If you build other houses, will they also be modeled on the tardigrade? <laughs> or would you find a different creature to base each house on? I would never replicate anything twice. So any other house or building or high rise or, or commercial space I might do, it's not going to resemble anything that I've done before. And I can prove that because the, the two projects I have right now for San Pablo, California and uh, San Diego don't resemble each other at all. And they're not even based on a, on a organic, uh, you know, an organism. They're, well, one, one building is suspended from, from this, these paired parabolic arches down a canyon. So it's suspended so it can swing. So in an earthquake, it gives and doesn't break apart in the shock wave of an earthquake. And it also lets breeze through the canyon come right through the house. It has a spiral ramp that goes three stories down. That spiral ramp acts as a conduit from the hotter part on the top, and so that the heat is drawn into the ground where it's cooler. So it's a passive solar, by the way, it has no air conditioning, heating, or ventilation at all. Um, and, that, and that house is very different from the office that I'm building for myself now in San, pa uh, in, in San Pablo, California, which we're just about to get permits for, which is completely different, and is not, it is sort of based on what I found, the milkweed and the, and the tree bark and the plants I found on the site, but not 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 directly so so I I don't repeat the same things ever uh, just as nature doesn't receive re repeat the same thing over and over again I'm against replication you know just add uh, the the uh, repeated replication of something yeah. so I would never do another fish house or a tardigrade house You mentioned in the movie that you can't really define success by the views of the people around you when you're doing something completely different. And so this is a question from me. I'm curious, how do you define success? I don't need to define success. Um, I don't, success is when, again, it's, I feel successful when I achieve the impossible. That's success to me. Uh, if you can create something that's never been done before and you make it happen, that is success. As we age, it seems like many of us lose some of our energy and passion for life and for the things that once we felt so strongly about. How do you maintain that energy and passion? Well, first of all, you ask yourself, why don't I have motiv the motivation, the passion, the energy? Ask yourself that first, because that, in that question is the answer. You know, I, 
I've told, been told I'm aging, and therefore I will be more gentle on my body. I will do less. I will. I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do that. You see the framework that our minds get as we age, because society says as you age, you you know you're this and that and that. No, you defy that. You take a stand against that, and you say I'm not listening to what society says, what any culture says. I'm doing what I think I need to do for myself. So if you lose muscle tissue and strength, well then gain some. You know, go to the gym, research it. Find out how you do gain muscle and, and strength. You need it, that's right, we all do. But you know, age has nothing to do with that either. Look, look at the obese the little kids that are around the planet. You know, look at the skinny little runts that we see around the planet. They, they don't know either. They're only 13 years old, 8 years old, whatever it might be, 18, 27. You know, they, they're in the same place you are. Because they have challenges too. So as, as a person that's aging, it, it's irrelevant. Find out what, what you need to do to get stronger. Just go do it. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing, so, there's nothing special about aging. You just, you, what, what's special is you've got to find the answers for yourself. And do it. You know, there, there are books you can, you, you, there's, it's all around you, especially in the United States. It would be a lot harder in China, I tell you, or India. But in, in the United States, books are everywhere. Try it. You know, get, get a book on bodybuilding. Get some books on plyometrics. Get some books on, on com competi uh, competitors who have workout plans. And try it. It's just a matter of going out and doing it. It's not, oh, well, gee, I, okay, I'm going to write this plan out, and, okay, I'm going to follow this. If you do that, you're never going to follow it. You have to find the answers and, and then that will motivate you to do it. Okay, so you're getting weak? All right, go and, go and work out and find some way, but don't just go to the gym and do repetitive reps and, and, and weight training and stuff, because you're, you're gonna fall asleep. You need to find a, say, a, a competitive skill. I really think competition is great because it, it forces other, it, it lets other people help you to excel. That's why I love competition, it helps others make help you to excel and so that drives you you don't you're not driven by oh god i gotta do this weight this weight routine again today you're gonna you know you're never gonna get anywhere like that you gotta go out and say okay i'm going to participate in this mma competition and uh, so what i'm seven years old seven years old if there's age groups you know i met an 80 year old at the world championships an 80 year old man he said there's nobody in my in my age group well and okay I'm, I'll, I'll 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 fight a 20 year old i don't care I'm going to do this. I love that spirit. You know, you don't be confined by your age. Don't be confined by, oh, I'm just going to do some exercise. No. You've got to find something that's going to motivate you to stay with it for the rest of your life. And I tell you, doing reps at the gym is not going to do that. You've got to find something that's going to, that's going to motivate you to be the best, to force you to excel at what you do. And, and, and once you do that, you, you'll be surprised at, at how good you become at that. So that's a little tip for everyone in this room. Don't just do an exercise routine. Find something you love to do and go out and do it. I don't know, skiing, whatever it might be. Uh, and you think, oh, well, I can't do boxing. I can't do MMA. I, I couldn't do, I can't swim. Well, I couldn't, how can possibly swim in competition? Uh, wrestling, gee, I'm kind of interested in badminton. You know, but, but competing in it? No, I'm too old for that. No, listen, listen to yourself. Listen to the, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. No, I'm too old for this. I'm too, uh, you know, I, it, I, it's too much. I, I don't have the time. What do you mean you don't have the time? You make your time. The time doesn't control you. You control it. And you make the time to do it. You know, I'm always asked that, Eugene, how do you find the time to play the piano and compose and, and, uh, and make, make board games and, and do, uh, draw, pay, draw architecture and, and design buildings and models and write books? Well, you make the time. That's all there is to it. Okay, at 9 o'clock at night, I'm, you know, I mean, at 7 o'clock, I'm going to the gym, one or two hours, and I, you know, I'm going to do, do that, or I come back, I'm going to play the piano for an hour. My next door neighbor upstairs is right there, and he can attest to uh, <laughs> what night playing. Uh, so, and, and then, you know, you, you make the time. You have to organize yourself. Organization and discipline are the two most important factors in achievement. And, and you need to do that. You need to organize your time. It's not just, oh, I'll do when I feel like it. No. Oh, I'm going to be the artiste and just do whatever I feel. No. 
You'll never accomplish anything that way. You know, the artiste. No. Forget about that. That's a myth. You need to d discipline yourself and organize your time and your life and achieve something. And show others that you can do it. Show yourself you can do it. Because if you don't show yourself and if you don't motivate yourself to do this, you're never going to do it. And, and to forget about money and forget about, you know, about prestige. That, that, that is a superficial, senseless, meaningless motivation. It's not a motivation at all. Money doesn't motivate. Look, look at people who have lots of money. Are they particularly motivated? No, they're not. They, you're sort of motivated to make more money, maybe, sure. But look how confined their lives are. You know, read about it. And, and, and you think, well, I'm too old to earn, to earn money or to do so. You know, C uh, Colonel Sanders was 65 years old when he invented KFC. 65 years old. And he took a little pot of ki chicken around all over the United States to show people how to make chicken. He invented his recipe, 65 years old. He was a total failure before that. Bankruptcy, bankruptcy. So was Abraham Lincoln, by the way. He went bank bankrupt three or four times, failed at Senate, uh, in the Senate for four or five times, then he became the President of the United States, and the rest is history. So you cannot give up. Look at Nelson Mandela. He was, you know, he was in jail for 27 years, pounding rocks. It, what kept him alive was a poem called Invictus. And I memorized that poem, you know, out of the darkness that covers me black, you know, dark. Anyways, that you've got to find a way to motivate yourself. You know, when, how old was, was Nelson Mandela when he became president of South Africa? I think he was in his 60s or 70s. 80s. 80s, yeah, maybe. So, you know, don't say that, don't think that because of your age you can't do things. Don't believe it because what I'm, because younger people are in the same boat. They say, oh, well, I can't do this, I can't do that. No, you can't, you can't design, I can't go out there looking like that. I can't, I can't, I can't. Well, you know, if all of us designed our own clothes and went out there and walked around, just think what an incredible world this would be. You open up your door and you see a person walking down the street with boa feathers and, and, uh, and, and inflatable balloons and things, you know, walking down the street. It would be incredible. You know, every day would be an, it just, you know, an astounding experience. But no, 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 I can't do that. I've got to wear my black outfit, you know, I've got to wear my, my sweater, my Gap clothes, my Dolce Gabbana shorts, my, you know, my Calvin Klein t-shirt. You know, what, what is this? You know, give me a break. You know, that, that is ridiculous. You know, and so, so are, are we so conscribed in our lives by brand names? You know, I, I, I'm disgusted by it. And so, and you ought to be too. And you ought to take, make a stand for it. Make a, be a voice for these things. You know, and, and, that's, what, and, and that's, what, uh, that's what drives me forward. You've been given a time capsule, and you can go anywhere. You can travel anywhere at any point in time. Where would you want to go? Well, you know, the, the usual thing is to go back and, and, and meet people that you think you could learn from. But really, and I think, okay, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Genghis Khan, um, uh, Tesla, um, you know, I would, I would love to meet all these people, uh, uh, Gandhi, uh, many, Inhotep, the, the Egyptian architect. But really, it's the future that I'm, compar I'm, that I'm concerned about. You know, those were things in the past, and they're really kind of irrelevant to us now. We have a no, whole new set of challenges. You know, we don't have much, much of a future right now with the ecological and economic collapse uh, looming over us in about 8 to 10 years. And I'm not just saying that out of my own personal opinion. Uh, MIT and Smithsonian have been tracking our, 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 our um, economic and environmental track for the past, since 1974. And there will be total economic and, and um, uh, environmental collapse in about eight or 10 years. And we're right on track. So, uh, so you say, well, God, how can you be, you know, that's such a gloom and doom attitude. Well, I'm about truth. And what if they're right? You know, what are we sitting around here for, uh, uh, just going about our business every day, going to the grocery store, buying food? You know? No, you've got to do something with your life. You know, you have to be a voice for that. And so I'm more concerned about the future than I am with the past. Sure, I would love to, to meet uh, Leonardo. I'd love to, uh, love to meet uh, uh, Edison, uh, to meet, you know, ancient people. Chinggis Khan is my favorite. But uh, no, I'm concerned about the future. And so... You know, let's put away the past and look and learn from the past uh, historically, but it's the future 
that is the biggest challenge. So I'm more about facing the future. This is a question from the audience. Um, do you ever relax? <laughs> well, I find uh, music to be relaxing. I find writing poetry to be like, I actually find creativity to be relaxing. You know, if I'm designing a building, it's, it's relaxing to, to, to design it because you, you, you are outside of yourself. And so um, I, uh, but relaxing in the sense of doing nothing, uh, I care, I, or I really refuse to do nothing. Uh, I mean, I, and I, so I sleep a lot. You know, I try to sleep as much as I can. And I try to, to be uh, quiet as much as I can, to relax. But, but as far as uh, uh, relaxing, no. I, I would say that I'm not a relaxed person in the, in the denotative sense of the term. They said you spoke about your shoes. What's the significance of the rest of your outfit? Yeah. Well, my outfit is designed by myself, and I, I work with a person in China, and we together we make these these clothing. Uh, for instance, the the cape. The cape is a wonderful moving architecture piece because when you're cold, you can wrap up. When you're when you're hot, you can you can open up. And I have this harness here that I, that I invented myself. It's buttoned to the top of my my cape because one of the downfalls of cape is when you move your arm around. The cape falls off your shoulders, but with this, with this, this chest plate, this chest harness, which is which is uh, uh, attached to my belt, I can move around. It can fall totally off my my shoulders, and it's not. It will be on me for good. Uh, also, my pants and and uh, you notice these ventilation panels here and and, and here and underneath. Um, they they are in the parts that keep when you sweat. Uh, you, there are, the air goes in and cools, keeps you cool. So, so my, art, my clothes are like moving architecture. And so I designed them in that purpose. And so, so everything I do has a purpose and a function. And that's part of being creative. Um, and so, you know, why not? Why not, why not a, apply yourself to every part of your life? Uh, I'm making a pair of shoes now at a place called Shoe Renew in, in Berkeley, made out of hemp. And they have ventilation areas, so when you, when you step, air pushes out, and when you release your feet to walk, air is sucked back in. So I call them lung shoes, because this is breathing, inhale, exhaling of the shoe. It keeps your feet uh, 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 well ventilated to keep them from sweating. Uh, and it's hemp, so you're not, you're not, killing, a, 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 you're not killing a cow to, to uh, wear them, or an alligator, or a, or a pig, or whatever it might be. So, um, you know, so that, that's all a part of it. So it's, it's, uh, it's having moral commitment to, to something and applying it to everything you do. I was curious if you felt like there was a particular point in your life that was a turning point for you that put in motion where you are now? I think when I joined the swim team in ninth grade, well, tenth grade, uh, that that was a turning point for me because I had to, I was one of three people uh, in the city that was eligible, well, that was, that was asked to swim with the University of Minnesota swim team. Now imagine a guy in tenth grade that is going to keep up with, high, with, with college, you know, pa uh, Pac-10, college level swimmers. That was incredibly grueling and challenging and I, st I stuck with it. And I remember the, the pain and the, the discipline required and the, the endless workouts and you know, that, that really tempered my, my spirit, my character to say, you know, I can do this. And I think that stayed with me a long time, uh, even to this day. So that was sort of the beginning. You know, before then it was you know track and field and uh, other things that were more or less social, socially driven. You know, my friends were 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 athletes, so okay, I'm just going to be on the relay team or throw the discus, which I did, and things like that. But but it was swimming that kind of instilled in me the sense of of discipline and and uh, and wanting to be the best. 
And that stayed, that, that lesson stayed with me for the rest of my life and is there to this day. Are there anything, any experiences that you've had of adversity or challenges or even emotional turning points, uh, perhaps even things that were uh, distressing at the time mm -hmm. that you've been able to change your perspective with? How about being expelled from two different universities? Now think of it, you're a young guy or girl and you're going into a, you go to university, a prominent university, Columbia University, New York City, and you, uh, you believe, you, you, you draw as you believe, you design as you believe, and people start to say, Eugene, we can't, we don't do this kind of work. We, we can't support this. You've got to find, you've got to go to a place that will support it, because you're wasting your time here. So, okay, so I go to another school, Oregon, in, in the West Coast. They did the same thing. They're actually more vindictive. They said, well, why don't you just be an artist, you know, because you're never going to be an architect. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, so here, think about that. Just go back to when you were 18, 19, 20 years old, and, you're, and the professionals are telling you that you are crazy, that there's no relevance to your work. Protecting nature, learning from nature is irrelevant. We want to keep nature out. We don't want nature to come in. <laughs> You know, and so what are you studying nature for? It's irrelevant. Now, now think of that, you're a little kid, you're, you're just you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, and these people that you respect are telling you, you are crazy or no good. Well, you have to either succumb to that, which I've seen people do, and, and become totally destroyed from it, or you say, not only am I going to succeed, I'm going to crush you. I'm going to make it so someday you are going to be so embarrassed at what you just told me that, that you will never live it down. And I am going to, I am going to get you. And, uh, and so that, those kinds of things, uh, I've also been married three times, by the way. And so, and in fact, my ex-wife is a visiting right here, my first ex-wife. So we're, we're still friends. Uh, but, you know, divorce, I'm sure some of you have gone through divorce. Uh, uh, that, that's a very emotionally trying thing. And there are times where I built a building. I would come home at 1 o'clock in the morning. I think, oh, God, this is so devastating. Man, you know, I like, this is a lot of work. And I started crying. And you know, here I'm in the dark by myself. And I think, geez, I never expected this. And, and then after, after, you know, a good cry, I think, wait a minute. Pick yourself up, Eugene. Come on, let's, let's brace up here. This is not going to be easy. So, so, you know, pick yourself up and let's go, let's do this. And so, you know, there were lots of emotionally trying times. Um, and, uh, you know, they were very hurtful. You know, your, your peers telling you that you're crazy. Um, uh, your wives <laughs> telling you you're crazy. Uh, your, uh, even my children. I have two boys and a girl. And I remember when they were younger and I was wearing, you know, capes and things, they said, uh, uh, Dad, could you walk over on the other side of the street, please? You know, I don't want my friends to, to see this, you know. So, 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 you, you know, so your own family, you're ostracized by them. And so, fortunately, my, my wife is very understanding and uh, she, in fact, with Sam, started the community garden here in Emeryville. And, uh, so, you know, so, so there's all sorts of emotional and sociological, uh, very you know, devastating, what, what I would think be devastating to a typical person. But you just have to, you know, st stand up and say, wait a minute, brush yourself off and say, wait a minute. Uh, no, I am me. I'm not going to let these, these people, these, these prejudicial, narrow-minded, short-sighted people get the best of me. Mm. Oh, no. No, and, and someday... I am going to destroy you. You know, that's what you've got to do. You cannot be the victim. You know, the, the bully mentality, that's a bully mentality. The bully, are, and I know, I've learned this in the ring, that bullies don't stand, they, they can't stand up for themselves. They're all talk and no action. So next time you are bullied uh, by anybody, you just take a stand and you just watch them cower in front of you. Because they, you know, to fight takes a lot of energy. No one want, people are lazy. They don't want to go out of the way to really fight somebody. They, they, they're all talk. And you just say, okay, let's, let's get it on. Let's, let's have it right here. 
Oh, whoa, well, whoa, well, wait a minute. Oh, okay, I was just kidding. You know, you know, you've got to, you've got to take a stand for something. Don't let yourself be victimized by your life, by society, by culture, by your friends. Oh, I'm old. Well, we can't do that. Uh, you know, let's walk to uh, the bay, the, the the bay area, you know, the shopping mall. Let me walk. Oh, no, we're too old. My bones are too brittle. My knees are gonna hurt. You know, always excuse, excuse. We we live behind a diaphanous curtain of excuses and demeaning ourselves and we have to stop that we have to stop this life of excuses you know how many excuses we, we give ourselves every day stop it you know you've got to take a stand for something you've got to be out there and do it and you've got to do it as you know as as, as good as you can you know don't drive me to the to the to the bay mall i'm walking i'll ride my bike you know you know be alive don't don't uh, you know don't take uh, don't take the elevator take the stairs, you know I I go to that one just come back from the airport you know I take the stairs everywhere I go oh look at that guy he's taking the stairs well you know they're in the they're in the escalators, mm -hmm. well so what yeah I'm gonna be 150 years old while you're dead in your coffin so you know <laughs> how about that, you know so you know you've got to you know you've got to just take grab of life you know take hold of it and be yourself and don't be afraid. And, and catch yourself when you when you start to make excuses for yourself. You know, we, how many how many how many piles of excuses we have? It doesn't matter how old we are. I hear it from from people at gym. I hear it from 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 my interns. I hear it from high school people. You know, oh, I'm 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 a little fat because you know this is the way I grew up. And what do you mean? You know? No, you can deal with it. You can do something about it. Uh, you know. Um, <coughs> One of my former interns is right here. He's now a renowned fashion photographer. And I, I'm, I'm pushing him to get into film, too. And, uh, and uh, if you don't mind me saying so, I, I, like, I like to use your story. Because uh, one day he was, he was very uh, uh, unhappy in my office. And, and uh, I said, uh, Leon, why are, why are you so unhappy? He said, because I don't know if I really want to do architecture. I said, well, what do you want to do? He said, you know, I'm kind of interested in photography. I said, well, do it, you know, get out of here. This is, you know, you do, I didn't say get out of here, but I said, okay, you're interested in photography, get a, get a camera and do it. You, this is the wrong thing, you know. This isn't really your passion, so, so go and follow it. Well, a few years later, he called me from Paris, and he's, you know, he's got work with, you know, different, uh, Marie Claire, with, you know, different renowned magazines, and he's a, now he's a, 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 a global photographer. So, you know, it's just follow your passion. You know, you've got, you've got to follow your interests. And you've got to find your interests. You're, you're probably asking yourself, well, gee, what are my interests? Well, <laughs> find them. Don't just, you know, sit around and read books and, you know, go to the library or, 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 or play Parcheesi or whatever you do, you know. <laughs> to do, you know, go out and do something with your life. You know, change the future. We need it. How badly we all need it. You know, be an example of, of change. And you might say, you know, the thing, um, all those excuses might come into your mind saying, oh, gee, but, you know, that, that's really interesting that, you know, Dr. Sway or Eugene says that, but, you know, it's, it's not that easy. You know, how many, how much, how much of our, our, our pattern way of thinking, you know, I can't, no, that's too much, I don't have time, you know, not, 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 not. You know, you've got to catch yourself and do something and, 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 and fight that. You know, be alive. Don't, don't, don't just succumb to your own excuses. That, you know, that, that is very important. And that is getting beyond age. You're, you're, you, are, you are the age that you believe you are. But if you don't, I don't think about age that much. I just, you know, I just do what I want to do. And uh, it doesn't matter. Well, you know, if I have to you know, pit myself against a 20-year-old, I will. You know, they're, usually, they're usually poorly out of shape anyways. You know, so, so, you know, and, and they don't know what to eat anyway. And they haven't experimented. You know, here you are, you know, you, what's youth? You know, I can outrun you anytime. Let, let's see you go three rounds in the ring. You, you'd be dead. You wouldn't make it past the second round. You know, come on. You know, come on, let, let's, let's, you know, let's, you know, let's tell the truth here. So this is, you know, th you, you need to, 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 Brace yourself and question and move forward with your life in a way that astounds you. Be extraordinary. Be astounding. And don't care what your friends say. Oh, what do my friends say about that? Who cares what your friends say? 
If they ridicule you, they're not your friends. And give them up. You know, that's ridiculous. You know, you have to be yourself. Because that's all you've got. That's all you have in this life, really. You say, well, I'm married. You know, I've got a nice wife or a nice husband. Oh, that's fine. But you're really, you're alone. And the, the minute you, you face the fact that you are alone, you know, alone means all one. That's where the, the name comes from. The root meaning of alone is all one. Well, be one. Be one with yourself. And see, what can you do? What can I ask yourself? What can I do? And you think, oh, well, I'm, pardon me, I'm crippled. I'm handicapped. I'm, you know, excuse, excuse, excuse. I happen to know, I have a picture of a man. His name is Dustin Carter. He was born with no legs and no arms. And he's a champion wrestler. He won scholarships to universities. No arms and no legs. He just has stumps. You know, they, they stop at about his elbow and his knee. And he wins. You know, this is amazing. I oftentimes when I think I'm, a, you know, I'm getting a little tired, I look at his picture and I think, yes, yes. If he can do it, I can do it. And I have a friend um, in China who's called Half Man. He was in a drunken stupor and a train ran over his legs and he's, you know, they call him Half Man. He said, oh, I'm going to kill myself. And it's, you know, it's an incredible story. But then he said, well, wait a minute, I, I, got, I can do something. I can write. I can, write. I can, I can scrape myself on the, on the sidewalk and I can write characters and make, make phrases and, and sayings. Now he's the vice president of the Calligraphy Society of, Society of China. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's a motivational speaker. You know, that's the kind of people we need to, you know, when you, when you think, I can't do this, I don't, no, I don't, I don't have the strength to do that. Think of these people. Think of Nelson Mandela, oh. you know, breaking rocks for 27 years. You know, sweating his butt off and, 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 and surviving on a poem. You know, think of that. So, so don't you dare uh, make excuses to yourself. You need to pick yourself up and change the planet. And don't, I don't care who says what. I don't care what your parents say, what, you, what your friends say. You just go out and do it. And you design your own clothes and your own car and your bicycle and your knapsack, whatever it is. You do it little by little. And I tell you, when you design your clothes, you are fighting against throw with the throwaway society because you never will throw your clothes away. I tell you, you will have your clothes for your whole life because you put so much energy and ideas in your clothing, you're not going to throw them out. And, and I've actually had people steal my clothes in, 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 from Watergate twice. There. But anyways, but the, so you, you're defying the whole momentum of, of the throwaway society when you design your own clothes. So, you know, so design your own car. You also define society when you design your car. Your phone, whatever it might be, you design your own and see what happens. And you become a much better person for it too. And pretty soon you start to think, gee, if I can design this tripod, maybe I could design a bicycle too. Or then maybe I could design some shoes or, you know, whatever it might be. It grows. It starts to, it, it starts to expand. And, and you know, probably, you know, we all know that. So, so go out and do it. And please don't go home and say, oh, isn't, isn't that interesting? Isn't that, you know, Dr. Sway interesting? Isn't Eugene? And he's one of, one of us in the Emeryville Watergate. Oh, isn't that, isn't that pleasant? You know, how, 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 how nice. Don't, don't say that. Say, now, what can I do here? You know, what can I do for the world? You know, what, what can I do to, how can I better Eugene? You know, one of the things that drives me, you talk about motivation and creativity. When I see something by Picasso or, or Edison, an invention or something, I say, hey, I can do better than that. You know, that, 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 that plate designed by Picasso, I, I can make a better plate than that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to show you I can do better than that. Uh, or a song. It says, oh, God, these songs about love, love, love. I'm sick of it. And let's do something else. You know, let's make a new song. And, and let's make it in odd time. So, okay, let's go out and do it. So, you know, if, you're, if you don't like something, then make it yourself. Make it better. Make it better. <laughs> you're here to do something. Well, go out and do it. And don't be confined by the framework of your age. Or, or oh, gee, I can't do this. I can't do that. Or what will people think? Uh, you know, don't, please, please don't live like that. Because you're going to waste your whole life away. And then on your bed, you're going to regret it. I tell you, I want to make sure that when I am dying on my bed, that I will not regret my life. That I, that I tried to do everything I could 
to make my dreams come true and to make the impossible possible. And I hope you will too. So, right. so think about that seriously. Don't think about, oh, isn't this fun? No, let's go out and have, let's go out dining. Forget it. You know, do, do, do create something. Don't just eat. You know, don't just go and do a, have nice small talk with your friends. Oh, let's play cards today. What good is that going to do for the world? You know, so, and, and you know, if you have, if you have children that are, that are, you know, accomplished themselves, okay, let's see you beat your children. You know, I'm going to be better than that. Oh, that's nice. But, but you know, I'm going to outdo you. Okay, let's see you do it. You know, don't be afraid. Don't, say, don't live your life through your children. You know, I frankly think my, my children, I, I, can, I can outdo my children any day. And I'm going to. You know, so, so you know, be the best you can. Because are you being the best you can? Sorrel or Paolo or, or Chase, my, my daughter. Uh, actually, my daughter, yeah, pretty good. But, but the, other, the other kids, are, you know, they're fitting into, oh, well, you know, I want to get a million dollar house. So I want, I want a, a Porsche, which he has. And, you know, all that stuff. Why are you buying that? You know, it's ridiculous. What, what's this with brand names? You know, don't fit into that. Be yourself. Design your own car. You know, for $30,000, you could design your own car and build it. So, you know, so, that, you know, grab the opportunity, make your own opportunities, and create your life the way you think it ought to be. And please don't, don't conform. You know, don't be another provincial person. Don't go through life saying, oh, well, you know, she's nice. He was nice. No, don't be like that. You know, stir up something. You know, you, you got to be, make your life extraordinary. You know, you're a human being. You know, be something. Don't just succumb to what society expects. Because they expect you to be a victim. They expect you to be like everyone else. No, you've got to fight against that. And, and, it, and it's work. Yeah, yeah. So, so I hope I will have imbued something in you today. Because, you know, you just go out and you do what you want to do. And use your anger. You probably have, it says, gee, Gene's got some anger in there. Yes, I do. You know, you're, when you're 18 years old and your professors tell you that you're nothing, you're never going to be an architect. Boy, I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to slap you. I'm going to throw you out that window. You know, you, know, you, you just, and you, and, 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 you know, anger, anger directed creatively is an incredible force, an incredible force. You, it's unstoppable. And so I use my emotional anger, my emotional motivation to, to guide me to do things, to push me forward. And you should do that too. Open yourself up. You know, don't just be, oh, you know, I'm a nice person. I'm just going to do whatever it is. No. You know, stand up. Be a voice. Be somebody. Don't just, don't just sit there and, and, you know, be like everyone else. So please, I hope, I hope this, this time together has affected you in some profound way, at least made you think, think seriously. This is serious business. I hope you don't see this as an entertainment, because it's not. You know, I hate entertainment. I don't want to be entertained. Uh, I, I, I want to have an effect. I want to do something meaningful. And you deserve to make your life meaningful. So what is that? You find out for yourself. And don't say, oh, well, you know, don't take for granted that everyone else is having fun. No, let's see you create your own fun. And question, you know, listen, question everything. And have the guts to, to do something different and be yourself. 